Our meeting was focusing on the development and story behind Exazomib as the first orally approved proteasome inhibitor. And obviously it's been very exciting in the United States to take it from phase one to two to phase three approval. And in that context, we were discussing the results of the tourmaline study where we were showing basically the clinical benefit progression-free survival advantage of around six months for the three drugs over the two, and really helping the audience understand how important it is that this drug is not only part of an oral, oral regimen, but also it's extremely well tolerated. There are no unexpected side effects with its use, its toxicity profile is very manageable, and it has the convenience of a once-a-week administration as a pill in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone. And what we were really drilling down on was some of the subgroup analyses in the study we randomized over 700 patients, 350 to RD, uh, 350 to the three drugs, and the study was placebo controlled. So what we were able to demonstrate, I think very convincingly, not only was this progression-free survival advantage obvious, there was response rate advantages as well, and most importantly, the drug appeared to work most effectively in patients with high-risk cytogenetics, particularly if they'd had two or more prior therapies, and especially in the relapsed refractory setting. So the three-drug combination was clearly active in those subgroups of patients who, in our experience, are particularly vulnerable. The other data we presented was straight from the recent uh, oral presentation at ASH uh, by Dr. Alessandro Dubacco, where she showed really convincingly this correlative science where CMYK expression was analyzed prospectively as part of the trial. And we were able to show that in high expressors and low expressors, exazomib was active in both, whereas that was not the case for lenalidomide, particularly uh, when you'd had two or more lines of therapy. In other words, lenalidomide obviously an effective agent in this setting, but exazomib really adding to it, and particularly in those patients with less favorable biology. So there was a really nice discussion around that. And then I think what was exciting in the symposium was to sort of take it to the real world and show cases outside of a clinical trial where we had been able to demonstrate convincingly how this drug combination could be used effectively to benefit patients. And I have a really good discussion with our panel uh, excellent haematologist here from the UK describing their experiences with their own patients. So it was a really productive and I thought very thoughtful session.